So, the church kids can never be the alpha group either. Their tactics are just too creepy. At many schools, the jocks would be a good bet to ascend to the throne. But at Benson, they're pretty much all black and many of the white kids are afraid of them. Who else is there to lead the masses? The smart kids? Please. They have no interest in politics. They're hoping simply to attract as little attention as possible until high school is over. Then they can escape to some college where no one will mock them for knowing how an adverb works. The theater kids? My God, it would be a bloody massacre. They would be found beaten to death with their own dog-eared The Wiz songbooks. The stoners? Too lacking in initiative. The gangbangers? Too rarely on the premises. The band kids? It would be like with the theater kids except somehow even sadder. The gothy dorks? Impossible even as a thought experiment. So at the top of the Benson social hierarchy, there is a vacuum. The result? Chaos. Although, let me also note that I'm using overly simplistic categories here. Are there multiple separate groups of smart kids, rich kids, jocks, etc.? Yes. Are there a bunch of groups that don't have easy labels because they're just loose collections of friends without a single defining characteristic? Also yes. I mean, if you wanted, I could just map out the entire school for you with geeky labels like Middle Class African American Junior Subclick 4C. But I'm pretty sure no one wants me to do that. Not even the members of Middle Class African American Junior Subclick 4C. Jonathan Williams, Dewan Williams, Dante Young, and, until he got really serious about the trombone midway through junior year, Darnell Reynolds. So, there are a bunch of groups, all jockeying for control, and consequently, all of them want to murder each other. And so the problem is that if you're part of a group, everyone outside of that group wants to murder you. But here's the thing. There's a solution to that problem. Get access to every group. I know, I know. This sounds insane, but it's exactly what I did. I didn't join any group outright, you understand? But I got access to all of them. The smart kids, the rich kids, the jocks, the stoners, the band kids, the theater kids, the church kids, the gothy dorks. I could walk into any group of kids and not one of them would bat an eye. Everyone used to look at me and think, Greg, he's one of us. Or maybe something more like, that guy's on our side. Or at the very least, Greg is a guy who I'm not going to flick ketchup at. This was a brutally difficult thing to accomplish. Consider the complications. One, infiltration of any one group must remain concealed to most, if not all, of the others. If rich kids observe you chatting amiably with goths, the gated community closes its doors to you. If church kids notice you stumbling out of a stoner car cloaked in smoke as though exiting a sauna, your days of conscientiously not blurting out the F-word in the church basement are over. And if a jock, God forbid, witnesses you hobnobbing with theater kids, he will immediately assume you are gay and there is no force on earth greater than the fear jocks have of homosexuals. None. It's like the Jewish fear of Nazis, except the complete opposite with regard to who is beating the crap out of whom. So I guess it's more like the Nazi fear of Jews. 2. You cannot become too deeply enmeshed in any one group. This follows from point one above. One must instead be at the periphery at all times.